I'll be talking about the fiscal return on education, but uh, as a prologue, I just want to stress here that as several of the earlier speakers pointed out, there's a very strong connection between poverty levels and education. The key to getting folks out of poverty is to give them the education and the set of skills that they need to be successful in the economy today. And I'll be talking about three things. I'll be talking about where money comes from, what we spend it on, and then give you a little quick thought experiment. And I'll try to boil my presentation down to just a few words. And the, the, these, the words would be this. States get their money from people who have an adequate education and spend it on people who don't. Okay, my, I have still have time left, Bridget? Okay. I'll elaborate on that in a few slides. Um, the first one, to talk about revenue. And th this is, I'm drawing some, on some work that we did in Oregon. I did a project for the Oregon Business Council, which is the Leaders Roundtable organization for the state, to look at the fiscal implications of education, and then by extension also, uh, you'll see there's a close connection to poverty as well. And what we did is we looked at a well-known association between education and income. You can see the more education you have as, as judged by uh, degree attainment, uh, by com educational completion, the higher your level of family income on average. Um, now, there's, the, there's actually a distribution of income. It isn't true that everybody with a college education earns more than everybody with a community college education or with a high school degree, but the distributions do shift over time uh, or do shift with more education, so the mean moves. I'll just skip over that briefly. But it's also true because states like ours and most states rely on things like the income tax that higher income, better educated people pay greater amounts of taxes. So in the case of Oregon, which actually relies more on the income tax than most states, uh, we get about three times as much income from the average household headed by a person with a four-year degree as we do from a person with uh, just a high school diploma uh, in our states, or less than a high school diploma, all, about $1,300 more than with just a high school diploma. So it's very clear in our state that our fiscal system depends on educating our population. So we get most of our income in Oregon. As it turns out, 53.4% of our income taxes come from the 36% of households uh, where the, the highest educated person in that household has a four-year degree. So the state budget depends on our ability to educate folks. Uh, and if you turn now to the expenditure side of the equation and you look at what the cost drivers are for state budgets, what states spend their money on, it turns out that the reverse is true, that people with a less than adequate level of education, who by definition are much more likely to be in poverty, are the big drivers of expenditure. So you look at things like our Medicaid program, the Oregon Health Plan, where uh, people who have less than a high school diploma are about five times as likely to be recipients of benefits under our health care program, so much higher level of cost there. You look at welfare recipiency, the people who are drawing TANF and other similar benefits, and there's about a four-fold difference uh, between the people who have a college degree and the people of uh, less than a high school diploma. So the big driver, again, for the caseloads for our welfare system uh, is the lack of education. Same thing is true, in, interestingly, in the unemployment insurance system, uh, that people with relatively lower levels of education uh, are much more likely to draw unemployment benefits. Now, this isn't quite as stair-stepped as the other ones, in part because these folks at the end, people with less than a high school diploma, very low levels of education, have low levels of attachment to the job market and in many cases don't have enough attachment to the job market to be qual to qualify on a consistent basis for unemployment insurance. So they, they may be unemployed, they may be out of the workforce, but they can't even draw the benefits, which is why uh, it's about the same for people right up through one to three years of college. And then you look at the correction system, which is in many states the fastest growing driver of state budget costs is the additional cost to incarcerate people. And again, very strong relationship between educational attainment and uh, uh, the need to spend money on those folks. So it's very clear that when you summarize state budgets, and while these are the data for Oregon, you would find similar results for other states, that again, the biggest driver of state revenues is how well educated your population is. The biggest driver of state expenditures is those people for whom you've done the least good job of providing education and skills. So let me leave you with this thought experiment. What if we were in a typical state, and I'll take, pick Oregon here, to take 10,000 people 
and move them from the high school graduate category, so not that lowest category, but just people with a high school education, and if we were to be able to snap our fingers and move those 10,000 people and suddenly drop them into the category where they had a, a four-year degree. What would be our estimate of the effect on state revenues? What would be the impact on expenditures? Well, we know that there's about a $1,300 per person or per household difference in uh, state taxes paid by co college uh, graduates compared to just high school graduates. When we adjust for the number of, of workers in a household, that works out to about $800 per person uh, per household. So we would expect an aggregate gain for those 10,000 people of $8 million in additional state revenue per year. So if we could reduce poverty, improve education, uh, for those 10,000 people to that degree, we would get about 8 million additional dollars every year. And then when we look at the cost side of the structure, uh, we'd save about $9 million a year spread across just those four program categories. So we'd spend less money on welfare, less money on uh, medical care benefits, unemployment insurance, corrections, and the like. So the net for our moving those 10,000 people from the one category to the other category would work out to a net gain to the state of something on the order of about $17 million every year. Uh, and that would be uh, for, for the uh, anticipatable future. So a big fiscal gain here. So I'll just wrap up by saying, again, we know that poverty and education are closely correlated. And hopefully what this data gives you is a way of documenting the assertion that I made at the beginning, that we get money from people who have an adequate education and spend it on people who don't. And hopefully what that reminds everybody is that there's a very strong, conservative, hard-headed fiscal reasons for focusing on policies that will reduce poverty, particularly by improving the education of our population. Thanks very much.